the title for today's discussion is external aerodynamic simulations using cf mesh and open foam now as we know open foam is an open source cfd tool no but yes. just to uh, uh, just sorry for the interruption just to let you know uh, this webinar is still 6:30 okay so we have to uh, wrap up by 6:30 okay? okay 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 yeah, no issues okay so we open foam is an open source uh, you know uh, cfd tool you can say a numerical package and uh, CF Mesh essentially tries to discretize a domain. Okay, so we'll also understand these things, but let us start with a very basic idea or a very basic uh, thing or the definition of a fluid. So any substance, a liquid or a gas, which tends to flow and essentially can, uh, you know, uh, be can attain the shape of any of the container it is in, is a fluid. Now there are three states uh, which we can visualize for any fluid: that is static, kinematic, and dynamic. Static essentially when there is no motion, okay, and fluid is at rest. Now kinematic where the fluid is in motion, but we don't have any information about what is causing that, you know, the motion. Okay, dynamic essentially the fluid is again at motion, but we know what has caused that motion. Okay, so why I'm starting with the definition of fluid is you should understand what are the important terminologies that we come across when we do a CFD analysis. Okay, which could be very very important and essential. Okay, before we go to CFD layout and understand how CF mesh works and you know how we can do a machine, let's just be very clear that okay, a fluid can attain the shape of a container it is with. Okay. So next thing is dimensionless numbers. So these dimension numbers plays a vital role uh, when you are trying to classify a fluid, essentially as uh, what do you say, uh, a compressible or incompressible or a laminar or a turbulent. So these dimensionless numbers, what you see essentially are obtained by dividing the inertia forces of a fluid by any of the other forces. For instance, viscous forces or gravity forces or pressure forces or surface tension forces. So the whole idea is dimensionless numbers essentially tries to reduce the amount of parameters required to understand the behavior of the flow. Okay. Now, for instance, if I have to say a Reynolds number, I would say it as a ratio of inertia force, then I, I would divide it by viscous force. Okay, so numerator is held constant, denominator would change. Okay, so the moment you change the denominator by any other variable, you will get you will get into a different variable. Okay, I hope the idea is clear how dimensionless numbers are coming to picture. Uh, you can raise your hand if it is clear. Okay. So we all know the ratio of inertia forces to viscous forces in the moment, if you try to simplify the entire, uh, you know, simplifications, you'll get it as rho V characteristic length divided by viscosity, dynamic viscosity and dynamic viscosity by rho, you will get it as kinematic viscosity. Okay. Now let us go ahead. The ratio of inertia forces to the elastic force when it is square root, you get speed of sound. Okay. Or what you call as Mach number which is V by A, speed of an object, the speed of the sound. So th these are the only two, uh, you know, two non-dimensional numbers, okay, which I am very much interested in because these two numbers speak a lot about the flow and its behavior, okay. If it is Reynolds number, we can speak about whether the flow is essentially turbulent or laminar, okay. For external flows, you know, external flow over a body, Reynolds number should be more than if it is more than five into 10 raised to five, we call it as you no know, uh, turbulent, provided the body is slender and you know streamlined well, like the aircraft wing. Okay. And if it is a bluff body, then more than 20,000. This is a standard protocol that you can follow. Okay. Internal flow essentially, where the Reynolds number based on hydraulic diameter is more than 2,300, you can call it as turbulent. And turbulence can also be in a natural convictions also where essentially due to density changes okay due to heat uh, the flow starts to move okay or tend to move in those cases you have to look into a relay number to the prandtl number ratio and you know it should be if it is more than 10 power 9 you can say that the the convection what is happening over there with the natural convection is essentially turbulent by nature okay now in all these cases we'll be limiting our ourselves to a laminar flow in all the simulations that we are trying to look into and our major focus would be on using CF mesh, which is a meshing utility. Okay. Now let us go further. Aerodynamics is a study of air, essentially air, or you can say gas also, but also essentially air. Okay. 
and how it affects when it is in uh, you know uh, what say when it is interacting with the solid object like a wing of an aircraft okay or let us say an internal flow where you know you have one uh, air going in getting compressed then there's a combustion and then it's coming out of a you know nozzle so how essentially the air is behaving when it is interacting with the solid object okay so this particular study what we uh, is known as aerodynamics uh, the formal understanding of aerodynamics its implications okay began uh, in 18th century but then uh, late 15th century we still had the ideas of aerodynamics but it was not really matured enough to have a wide scientific you know uh, applicability okay so understanding that you know it's a very interesting uh, uh, you know concept we should understand that this aerodynamics plays a vital role provided you understand how it is uh, you know affecting the body okay now there are some branches of aerodynamics uh, incompressible and compressible depending upon the mach number you can classify or categorize them okay if it is uh, if the mach number is from 0.8 to 1.2 we call it as a transonic flow okay uh, more than 1.2 to 1.3 we call it as a supersonic flow and then more than 5 it's a hypersonic flow okay so it all depends upon the mach number just like we described laminar and turbulent based upon reynolds number we also classify the flow based upon your mach number Uh, so i hope this idea is clear now why mach number and reynolds number plays a vital role here when you do a simulation if it is clear raise your hands very good let's go ahead now there could be two kinds of you know aerodynamics simulations that could be performed in an industry one is external aerodynamics and one is internal aerodynamics now when a flow is flowing over an object okay uh, when the the fluid exerts pressure or force on the object and there is a resultant force which is acting in the direction perpendicular to the surface remember that i am saying perpendicular to the surface it is not perpendicular to the air it is perpendicular to the surface okay clear everyone yes okay now so there are two forces which are widely you know encountered that is drag force and lift force so for any external aerodynamic simulation the end goal would be to find out what is drag and what is lift acting on an object if for the drag force we have to take the resultant force acting in the direction of the flow and the force that is perpendicular to the direction of flow is called your lift okay remember this thing the resultant force component of the resultant force acting in the direction parallel to the flow or the free stream velocity is your drag and the component acting perpendicular to it is called your lift now this particular resultant force what you see here is because of two components one is pressure one is shear pressure essentially acts normal to the surface what you can see pressure into da is the pressure force similarly shear acts along the surface so tau is called the shear into da area small area so if you resolve them into component you'll get lift essentially as two components one is your pressure component acting in the downward direction and there's a shear component acting in the upward direction along the lift direction now this is a total lift and you have to integrate this entire thing over the area uh i hope i'm able i'm clear i'm audible to everyone yes yes no well you are audible clearly yeah so now the thing is since non dimensional numbers are widely used when you are uh, you know we're trying to compare the things we essentially go with a non dimensional lift okay we call coefficient of lift that is lift by dynamic pressure into the area now this projected area what you see here could be a number which could be used for scaling also okay that's the use of this uh, coefficient of lift similarly if you resolve the component in the other direction or the direction parallel to the flow we call we get the drag force okay now as essentially there are two kinds of drags one is pressure drag and one is your skin friction drag okay now if you see here if you observe here carefully what would happen when theta essentially becomes 90 any idea can you tell me which drag is more predominant here yes type in the chat which drag will be more if theta becomes 90 what would happen you can type in the chat if theta becomes 90 which of these two components will be there
Sure. Okay. So if theta becomes 90, you see that this will be cause of 90 minus 90 becomes zero. Cause zero is one. So essentially your pressure drag would be negligible. Okay. Clear. Now, in that case, just have a look at this particular case. Example, okay. We have a flow over a hemat body where flow is coming from, you know, uh, inlet. And assume that it's going over some, you know. So here, what kind of a drag is more dominant? Is it pressure drag or skin friction drag? Just type in the chat. What do you think? Is it pressure drag or skin friction drag, which is more predominant here? Rohit says pressure drags, this says pressure drag. Right, it is pressure drag because you have a lot of pressure difference that has been created, okay? Clear everyone? Very good. Rahul says yes, okay. Let's go ahead. Now the last thing that I want to cover up with the fundamentals is boundary layer. Now, as you all know, whenever the fluid comes in contact with the solid surface, there is a kind of a friction that has been created to the motion of the fluid. Okay. A kind of a viscous, viscous effect. Okay. Now there could be an entire session that could be taken on understanding boundary layer or evaluating boundary layer. But the whole idea is boundary layer essentially is a line joining locus of all the points away from the wall where the velocity is equal to free stream velocity or approximately equal to 99% of the free stream velocity. Okay. And within the boundary layer, the viscous forces over dominate, okay. The initial forces and away from the wall, you don't see the viscous effect clear. I hope this idea is clear. Everyone with the boundary layer, raise your hand if it is clear. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead. Now CFD workflow, the basic workflow includes a problem definition. Then you have a pre-processing, uh, what we call it as discretization or finite volume discretization or what you call it as meshing. And then you have solving of these Navier-Stokes equations or governing equations over the discretized elements. And then you have post-processing of results. Now this layout is essentially con common, even if you use your ANSYS Fluence, Star CCM or any kind of a CFD solver. The same thing would happen here also. You have an open form as a solver instead of ANSYS Fluent. You have a problem statement, you have a geometry, you have to mesh it or discretize it. Now to discretize this particular mesh, there are many utilities in open form. One is called your block mesh, we have snappy hex mesh. You can essentially get the mesh from ANSYS Fluent or ANSA. But there's a very interesting tool that is CF mesh, which will be, you know, uh, will be using today. Okay. Now open form with CF mesh. Now CF mesh is essentially designed for engineers and others experts in CFD in their, you know, product development. And it is essentially uh, a way to ease up, okay, to do mesh in open form. Probably people who have used open form, you know, uh, to a large extent with snappy hex mesh or maybe with block mesh. Uh, they would definitely agree with the point that it's slightly tedious to mesh using mesh, uh, you know, snappy hex mesh utility or block mesh utility. Okay. So this particular, uh, you know, utility CF mesh provides an additional edge by easing up your process. Now, some of the key features are, you know, it resolves, you know, resolving the complex geometry, simple setup. We'll see how the setup looks like uh, speed. It runs in parallel and uh, it is, like you have a you know a support for this also okay so the cf mesh is like organization which essentially have their own premier products also cf mesh plus okay so you can also look into their website at cfmesh.com so uh, the idea being that uh, it's a open source utility okay cf mesh is an open source utility which is given to you to you know uh, learn more things or you know explore more of the things from it okay now an open form file structure essentially contains three major folders. One is zero, constant and system. Zero contains your initial conditions, that is velocity and pressure. Constant folder contains polymesh or the mesh information and the transfer properties. Uh, if it is a turbulent flow, you may also have uh, your turbulent properties. Okay. And system contains your mesh dict, essentially a block mesh or snappy mesh, or in this case of CF mesh, we have something known as mesh dict. Then the remaining folders remains the same. Uh, a control dict where you have all the controls for the time, uh, discretization, 
Okay, and then you have FV schemes, schemes for gradient, you know, the diffusion terms. Okay, and you also have a solution where you declare the tolerances, the kind of linear solvers you, have, you want to use. Okay, so this is the essential structure. The only difference in using a block mesh or a snappy mesh, okay, uh, when compared to CF mesh, is the mesh dict file, okay, the utility file. Now, now let us look at the. We'll be doing two case setups today. One is a cylinder. So we consider a cylinder with you know two units of diameter and height. Okay, so we'll be exploring three different Reynolds number, 10, 100, and thousand. Essentially, I, I want to limit the cases to laminar, and I wanted to explore with the you know higher Reynolds numbers also. Okay, once the webinar site is done. So Reynolds number is U D by nu, essentially. So you can find U is Reynolds number by two. So essentially, your Reynolds will be five fifty and five hundred. So these are the three setups that we'll be looking into. Now the very first thing that you need to understand is your geometry. Okay, that is given to you. Now geometry essentially is taken in you no know, CF mesh from a STL format. Okay, for the people uh, who are not familiar with STL, I would highly recommend you you know uh, going and understanding about how a STL file is made. Okay, it contains uh, information in the form of triangles with the inform with the nodes and the surface normals. A very it's a very interesting way to store the geometry. So I would highly recommend you reading uh, more about it. So there are two ways you can understand your geometry. One is directly visualizing it in ParaView, or you can use a utility known as surface check. Okay. So I have highlighted the command at the bottom. So most of the slides I have highlighted the commands that would be used. Surface check block mesh. So GU is a folder, and the geometry name is cylinder dot STL. Now what I would do is I would guide you towards the process. Okay, of understanding this. For instance. I hope you are able to see my screen, the terminal. Uh, you can raise your hand if it is okay. Yes, okay. Now have a look at this. So you can see that I am actually in a location known as uh, cylinder underscore basics. Okay, and you can see that there are folders zero constant. Geo is geometry folder, and this is a system folder also. As I have told you, constant contains your uh, block, uh, mesh information and geo. Contains your geometry files. If I go into the geo, you'll see that there's a file called cylinder dot stl. Okay. Now, if I say the command that I have been telling you, surface check. You can use a hyphen and press tab key. It will, you know, try to show you the options also. Okay. So it's it comes mostly with the practice. Okay. I need to explore a lot with these terminals commands. Okay. Block mesh, and then uh, you can have to tell the geometry. So it is there in geo folder slash cylinder and the extension STL. If you press enter, you will see that the dimensions are specified here. Okay, so the vertices or the bounding box is minus one, one, and one. Okay, so which indirectly indicates that your dimensions are essentially minus one to one, minus one to one, and minus one to one. Now, for instance, just have a look at this. I hope you are able to see the see this thing. Yes, perfect. Others, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now. Second thing is creating a bounding box. Since we all know that if you want to do an external aerodynamic simulation, you need an enclosure, okay, through which essentially would be your fluid domain, okay. And to create that, you have something known as surface generate bounding box. This is also an utility from CF Mesh, okay. So it says you have to you have to provide the geometry as STL format. Then you can write the new name of the file that would be created, and you have to specify the locations, okay, the position of the surfaces from the geometry, okay. That is essentially you have to say negative x, negative y, positive x, positive y, and then you know negative z and positive z. Okay, so we'll do this thing also. Just give me a second. Let me just open the terminal once again for you. I hope you are able to see the terminal. Let's raise your hand if it is clear. Yes. Okay. See this surface. Generate bounding box. Okay, my geometry is in geo folder by name cylinder. If you recollect, it's called cylinder dot stl. 
Now, second thing that I have to provide is a new geometry file that would be created. Okay, so I want it to be created in a folder known as constant tri surface. There's a folder called constant tri surface. In the constant, there's one more subfolder called tri surface. Now, I want this to be known as uh, let us say box underscore cylinder dot stl. Okay, so this will be our new file name box underscore cylinder. Now, along with this, I have to specify the locations of the surfaces okay from the center 9 9 negative x positive x y and z done now we need to observe this particular thing so i will say this is a command which creates a foam file now let us just write a command called explorer.exe dot it opens essentially the file okay at this location now I would highly recommend you going through, uh, you know, uh, uh, I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Visible? Yes, okay. noble. we are able yeah. to see your screen. Okay. So let me just, you know, press enter here with this. Uh, probably you guys need to see the folder, I guess. Yeah. I hope you're able to see the folder now. Uh, uh okay some people are saying they are able to see some are saying no uh okay yes okay perfect so here if you see we have a file called sim that has been created and this was a geometry folder and this was a cylinder stl file which i was telling you and i have created a new file with the bounding box or the enclosure in constant this is a folder called tri surface and you can see box underscore cylinder okay clear i hope the idea is clear yes okay now what i would be doing is i'll open up para view and we will have a look at this particular file that we have created okay so that you get to know how exactly it looks like so let me just open the para view for you and I'll share the screen also with you. Just give me a second. Okay. Just give me a second. So I'm going a little slow in this case because I wanted to understand how things are being done. You can click on apply and there you go. Okay. So the one thing that you do in ANSYS Fluent with creating an, you know, enclosure, it's the same kind of a, you know, phenomenon, uh, you know, kind of a utility where you are creating an enclosure here. Okay. You can reduce the opacity here to check. Okay. Now let's see. So you see here, we have the cylinder here. Okay. I hope this point is clear everyone. Yes. Perfect. So this is how you can open the you know STL file and see. So now we have essentially the cylinder and there's an enclosure. Okay. Now next thing that we have to do is we have to mesh it. Okay. Now to do meshing, we have to see or look into the file that is your mesh dict file. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go to system folder. There is something known as a mesh dict file. Okay. Just I am opening this thing for you. You can open it with Notepad. Just give me one minute. I hope you are able to see the file. So have a look at this file. Okay. So there are a lot of things written here, but it's still very less. Okay. This file would work with single command also, like only one line also. Okay. You need to understand that, but I'll show you what are the things here. So it says surface file, which particular geometry you want to mesh. Okay. It's called box cylinder dot STL, which is in constant tri surface folder. What's the maximum cell size unity. Okay. 
now these things these are optional statements if you want you can just disable them also that is also fine then we want to look into an refinement also because we have a cylinder we also want to have a refinement around the cylinder so we say we need a box around the cylinder and the center of the box is 0 0 0 from the 0 four units in x direction four in y and four in z okay these are the refinement so you'll create a box across a cylinder with four units from the center okay now similarly this particular refinement will have a cell size of 0 0.5 whereas your max cell size was one okay now you can also define some local refinement within the surfaces also okay that is also possible you might have done surface refinement in your you know ansys fluent you know while doing meshing or maybe in ansa so you can declare those kind of a local refinements also this is you know uh, somewhat useful when you have you know large curvatures you want to capture okay so this is a kind of a way where you know you can define the amount of refinement you want on the surface okay or on a localized locations okay these are also optional for the information these are also optional okay and this entire set x min is called inlet this essentially comes as it is in the file you don't have to change anything else okay so you just have to run this file with one command okay uh, is it clear everyone uh, any doubt till here in this file no sir okay perfectly clear okay let's go ahead just let me just go ahead just give me a moment let me just share the skin okay so once you create this enclosure with the surface and a bounding box okay so this uh, this commands are pretty important and you'll find them in your tutorials also okay you, it's, these are not new that i'm creating or you know coming out with they're actually there in the tutorial cases also okay it's just that the application changes you have to understand where you want to change the input okay now sir should we mesh the box as well yes we have to mesh the box as well so if you see here so since we are doing an external aerodynamics essentially you need the mesh across or surrounding the cylinder right so that's what we have done here so if you see here this is how it looks like when you mesh this entire thing I hope you are able to see this thing. Uh, visible? Okay, perfect. So to create this particular mesh, you have to just type one more command called Cartesian mesh. Now, there are different kinds of utilities that you could use with the same file. Okay. So once you write this mesh dict file, you can run different kinds of meshes or you can create different kinds of meshes. Okay. If you write Cartesian mesh in the command window, it will essentially create a Cartesian mesh or hex dominant mesh. If you want a tetrahedral mesh, you just say tet mesh. Okay. If you want a poly mesh, just type p mesh. Now, remember that we are not changing the file. We are just changing the command. Okay. The file, the structure, everything remains as it is. There's no changes. Clear everyone? Okay, so now now Rohit is saying that such cylinder edge is not captured properly. Now, this is one thing that you need to understand when you are having an open source software, you need to be very, very, very careful about, you know, the advancement which comes about. Okay. Uh, now, the thing is, since the edges are not captured properly, there is a remedy for it. Okay. There's something known as surface feature edges. Okay. So if you use this command or this utility of surface feature, you would be able to capture that edges also. Okay. Sir, a way, uh, way to inputs about mesh. Okay. Let us do one thing. I hope everyone is able to see the screen. Terminal. Yes, I hope everyone is able to see the terminal. Yes. Now you just have to type only one command here that is called Cartesian mesh. That's it. So this is a command. Okay. And the input file 
is essentially in your system folder okay so for the reference i'll just show you again here if you go to your system folder you will find a file called meshdict you have to write those you know lines max cell size in this particular file only it is already available you just need to replace the things okay uh, is it clear now yes okay now in order to create the mesh it is pretty straightforward just type cartesian mesh bingo okay so see it, it has meshed the entire domain okay i'll just uh, do one more thing i'll just open up the terminal i'll just open it for you just give me a second i hope you guys will be you guys are able to see the para view yes yes okay let's go back just give me a second okay so you are able to see this thing i believe this is the mesh that has been created and probably if i just reduce the opacity you'll be able to see the cylinder inside and uh, if you want to see how the mesh looks like you need to make a slice okay and then probably you can make a z normal and then click on apply okay i can need to remove this probably and then you can see the surface with edges now see this uh from any sort this is not a really good mesh but then you have to play around with the parameters to create furthermore okay but nevertheless your simulation would still run on this mesh okay clear yes is it clear everyone okay now how do we change the mesh size sir now this has to be done in your mesh file again okay now for instance if you go back to your mesh file you can see that there is a term known as max cell size i hope you are able to see this thing tj now here you can essentially change the size also like i can make it 0.1 here okay clear yeah so you have a basic control called max cell size and in the refinement you can change it furthermore like you can make it as point let's say uh, Zero five or something like that. Okay, and you can still run this thing. Okay, now how big should be your max cell size depends upon your geometry. Okay, clear. Okay, now let us go back. So since you have seen the para view, now let us go back to your this thing. Now these are the simulation results that I have you know uh, kept here. so if you see most of the results that i have kept here are essentially with you know uh, less or what is a max cell size of 1 uh, you can essentially recreate these things they are available on the tutorials itself okay you may have to create a geometry by yourself probably but you can give it a try okay now look at the beauty like you just have to write like uh, you know few lines and then you know you are good to go that's it okay so that's powerful is you know your cf mesh utility is now if you have to do the same thing in snappy you have to create a you know the background mesh using block mesh dict file then you have to write a entire sequence of you know lines in a snappy x mesh dict which is very tiring also at times okay now similarly you can run it for second case and third case okay now these are this is how essentially your meshing is done with snappy with cf mesh okay so the process is pretty straight forward first you need to look into your geometry figure out the bounds okay once you find the bounds the next thing would be figuring out what should be your refinement domain okay refinement box size and then in case you want to do a local refinement on the surface you should create that surface name okay of the cylinder that's it these three inputs are more than sufficient to create your external mesh okay for external aerodynamic simulations now since i am not doing a turbulence flow i am not creating a layering here okay so fluid essentially is air okay i have given a viscosity of 1 uh, kinematic viscosity of 1 for the you know uh, approximation okay you can essentially run with a you know uh, appropriate values okay so 
so basic inputs that we need is a file stl file then a size of it then object refinement box or the refinement zone that you want to create and then you have local refinement okay clear everyone i hope the idea is clear everyone what about others sorry sorry noble uh, i hope every everyone is clear yeah yeah okay i was asking the participants if they are clear with the doubts yes okay wonderful okay so then let's go with the second case okay we have one more case study okay so lugia is a so i, I was just you know uh, going through a few days back i was seen like there's a lot of hype coming up for pokemon series you know after a long time you know uh, the original character has won some you know championship so going through you know some of the you know uh, or say posts have been you know slightly you know motivated to create you know simulation over a you know, legendary pokemon called lugia now this is slightly interesting also because you understand lot of you know utilities here with this particular you know uh, geometry okay now uh, no there could be a point where people ask like why not pikachu or something else but this is like you know something which i found okay so i just wanted to teach you few more utilities okay rather yeah, than teaching you cf mesh again with you know uh, the same file it is essentially the same thing but then there are some utilities which you should which you can also use okay for instance the geometry which you see here is in mm scale most of the times when you get a geometry from you know any other designer it comes in mm scale okay now you have to convert it to your meter scale now most of the times you may have to go to you know other third party software like you know any free care or something or maybe blender and you have to scale it down rather than that there is essentially a utility known as surface transform points what's the utility surface transform points and you can declare the scale okay 0.001 now specify the file name okay look area.stl okay and then you can specify the location where you want the scale file to be okay in constant try surface now what happens is once you type this particular command it would essentially scale this entire model in this terms okay everyone is it clear yes it's essentially a very you know interesting uh, factor it's essentially called scaling okay it's earlier it used to be a little difficult if you want to you know scale it okay uh, using the third party software you have to go back come back rather use this utility okay surface transform points so there are a lot of sub utilities with this thing also surface transform me uh, i'll show you how do you essentially understand what are different utilities also different functionalities with this utility so in case you want to learn more about it you want to explore more uh, when you come to terminal just type surface transform okay okay surface and then i would say uh, transform transform points and i would say hyphen help and you can see these are all the function that it can do like it can essentially do a rotate it can do a roll pitch and yaw it can translate okay so these are all the things that it can do okay so this particular utility can do clear everyone so as per your requirement okay you can essentially utilize any of those functionalities clear yes got it okay now so probably see there could be a point where you know your geometry may not be aligned in the direction of the flow okay so see designer will create design as per his convenience okay not as per your convenience and when you are dealing with a graphical user interface version of cfd like for example ansys fluent or let us say you know uh, star cesium kind of a thing or comsol it is pretty easy to identify which side is your you know in you know inlet outlet but then when you are dealing with open form where it's all a script you need to be careful okay you need to understand okay now in that case this this utility is essentially uh or say are very handy essentially okay now let us just come back to our slide now look at this 
So we have essentially converted from mm scale to a meter scale. Now we need to align this particular you know object or what you say our Pokemon in the direction of X because I want my flow to happen in X direction. Okay, and CF mesh should really becomes little easy if it is aligned in the direction of X. Okay, now to do that, so I believe everyone is aware about these three terms, right? Roll, pitch, and yaw. Roll essentially happens about rotating about X axis. Okay, pitch about your Y axis and yaw about your Z axis. Okay, so roll, pitch, and yaw. If you see, I just if I want to align this particular Pokemon along X direction. Or this particular object along x direction i have to rotate about y axis okay is it clear yes is it clear any doubts here now it's a very very interesting point because i want my flow to be aligned in x direction now there's not necessity that you have to do it this way but I feel it very, you know, uh, like I feel very confident when I write in you no know, velocity in my X direction. Okay. So it's pretty, you know, I'm used to it. Okay. For the people who are used to it, then this is one interesting utility you can use. Okay. Now, probably, you know, you can use the same utility for uh, what you say, you are pitching off an aerofoil. Okay. Just like you do in ANSYS Fluent, uh, you know, rotating about Y axis by, you know, 45 degrees. Okay, 30 degrees, 15 degrees angle of attack. So you can essentially incline those airfoils and you can mesh it. Okay, you don't have to create another mesh file or what's a, a geometry file with you no know, inclination by transforming the coordinates, not required. You can do a transformation here itself with this utility itself. Okay, clear? Yes, I hope the idea is clear, everyone. Yes, is it clear? Okay. Now, once you incline it or align the with the axis, it looks something like this. Now, if you observe, the object is essentially aligned in the direction of X. Okay. For me now, for right side is my inlet and left side is my outlet. Okay. Now, once you have aligned it properly, the next thing would be again, as I told you, the procedure is pretty straightforward. You have to create a bounding box across around this so you can create a bounding box okay first you can check the dimensions make sure that it is you know properly made okay probably you can use paravi to observe the dimension or you can use again the same command surface check pressure is same the command is also same only thing is geometry file name will change that's it okay now once you observe the you know vertices and you are sure enough that your geometry is correct then the next thing would be creating a Again, an enclosure across this, generating a bound bounding box. Okay, so surface generate bounding box. Okay, and you can say the rotated STL file or geometry file, and you can say how much distance you want: 0 0.6, 0 0.3, okay, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So it depends upon what is your, you know, how much lengthy you want the dime, the enclosure to be. Okay, you can essentially play around and see. Okay. Uh, for Formula One cars, they say at least, you know, uh, like in front, it should be like five times the length of the car and behind uh, in the wake, it should be around 15 times the length of the car. So as per that standard, I have taken like once and, you know, five times. So uh, I have not gone to the, you know, exact, uh, I would say SOP, but then this is fine. This is still fine. Okay. The command is again the same. I have not changed the command. It's just the file name that has changed. Okay all the things remain the same okay now here if you see this is how the job the mesh looks like essentially and you can see it is pretty fast okay compared to answers to quite fast okay now so this one big issue which even i faced when i was doing this thing that i would like to share with you probably i feel you will also get stuck sometime you know uh, trying to figure out this thing how do we understand or how do we make this refinement box? Okay. Because there's a center and then you have length X, Y, Z. How do you make this thing? Like, how do you understand this point? Where should be my center? How much, uh, you know, length should be X, how much should be Y for the refinement? Okay. Based on the object. Now for that, uh, there's a small trick that you can do in Paraview. You can create a box or an enclosure in Paraview itself. Okay. Uh, there's a possibility. You can create a small box and you can see the dimensions of that box. Okay. 
and accordingly you can place it here okay so paraview gives you that liberty of creating that box and you can essentially place it here okay clear uh, is it clear everyone now uh, i will also show you how to do that thing also but you know stay with me just give me a moment just give me one minute guys Guys, just be in uh, just one minute, okay? Uh, all good. Yeah, just give me one minute, guys. I'm just trying to share the screen. Just give me one minute. Okay, I hope everyone is able to see the Paraview screen. Yes, I hope everyone is able to see the screen. Visible? Okay, perfect. Now, this is the bounding box that you might you know, encounter. Okay. Now, the thing is, how do you understand like what should be the dimension of the box that you want to create? Okay, because this is one important thing that you have to create across. Okay. So, how do you make that particular box? Okay. Now, to do that, there's something known as an option here. Okay. You can go here to uh, probably to sources, I believe, and there's a geometric object and something called box. Click on the box and you can see the dimensions, X length, Y length, and Z length, and there's something called center. So now you can essentially do one thing also. You can just come to this box and also make sure that your axis is, you know, uh, visible. Okay. Axis grid is visible. Okay. Now you can, this is similar to fluent, a kind of a fluent. Okay. So the idea being. In Ansys Fluent, you have to give a lot of options. You have to click on a lot of options, but here you just have to write that one file with five to six lines. Okay. As compared to Snappy, where you have your lengthy file. Okay. Now, what you can do here is you can see which particular location you want the box to be. Okay. So that this entire geometry is essentially filled in it. Okay. Now, can you just guys think what could be the geometry essentially? Like what should be the size of the box? Where it should be essentially? Just give me some dimensions. Type in the chat. I want to create a box which can close this, enclose this, you know, this thing. Okay. See what could be the X essentially. Okay. Just guess a little bit. Let us see. So this is a pretty big box. Okay. We don't want this much. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. Let us say, okay. This is a small box, okay. So now, if you see, this is a small box. Now I have to make sure that this box essentially aligns, okay. But it so that your locario essentially is inside that box, okay. Now center could be changed. Essentially, x direction could be changed. Let us say 0 0.25. Y. Let us see if that shifts. See this. Okay, you get my point. So you have to essentially check this way. Okay, you have to essentially do a hit and trial and see which particular dimension would fit exactly as per your requirement. Okay, clear everyone. Yes, is it clear? Clear. Okay, so you can essentially think of you know probably point one and minus point one something like that. Now check like this. Okay, now you can see that some part of the thing is inside. Okay, now you have to see 
probably this should be zero point or uh, this could be let's say point four or something like that. Okay, make sense, everyone. Is it clear, everyone? Clear. Point three, point one, point one. Correct. So now, depending upon you know where is your geometry and how you want to enclose this thing for a you know to create that enclosure, you have to essentially understand this box dimensions and you have to essentially put that particular dimensions here in the refinement zone. Okay, in the object refinement things. Okay, the center. Length along x, y, and z, so that the entire geometry that you want to be refined or the zone to be refined with you know uh, lower cell sizes has to be defined. Okay, this is one way that you can figure out this thing. Okay, hello. So, uh, guys, I believe I'm audible to everyone. Perfect. Okay. So you can come to Paraview, open your, uh, you know, the bounding box, what you have created, then whatever object you want to refine or the refinement zone that you want to create, create a box. Okay. And then you can essentially create that refinement. Now there could be a possibility that if you are essentially doing a mesh for, let us say, a, a vertical stabilizer with foreign aircraft, let's say, uh, a fuse large than vertical stabilizer and then a wing. Okay. In that case, you can essentially create refinement zones only to the wings. Okay. Or the vertical stabilizer. So for that cases, you can use instead of box, you can create a, let's say a kind of a cone also. That's also fine. Okay. Uh, okay I'm just giving an example. Uh, I hope the slide is visible everyone. Perfect. So you can try exploring those things also, you know, creating different, uh, you know, objects and, you know, meshing them. Okay. With a refinement. Now, essentially, if you do this meshing, it takes a lot of time essentially. And, uh, the, with the same cell size, what I have given you, uh, you'll be able to run it. If you have, uh, like 16 GB of RAM, probably it will take like, uh, what do you say? Uh, less than like four to five minutes. Okay. But then if you want a more refined thing, then probably I would highly recommend you running it with, you know, higher RAM, you know, system which contains higher RAM. Okay. Uh, 16 GB will definitely will not be sufficient. Okay. Your process essentially gets killed out. Okay. So that is one big issue. So probably if you're using CF mesh, then I would highly recommend you using systems with, you know, uh, more RAM. Okay. Now. Running simulation is pretty straightforward. You can copy the files, uh, you know, pressure file, you know, P and U file from any existing tutorial, and you can run the simulation. Okay, providing the initial conditions. Okay, uh, for this, I have run with uh, probably you know the inlet as uh, 1.3 or something, 13 meter per second something. So this is the simulation results. Now, uh, what I wanted you to understand here is remaining part of the thing that is you know copying P and U file and you know pasting it in the folder and running the case setup. It's not that difficult, but understanding how CF mesh utility is useful in reducing your effort in meshing for an excel aerodynamics is the thing here. Okay. So I believe you have understood the process. Okay. You have understood the file essentially. Right. Yes. Is it clear everyone? Any doubts here? Okay, so you can create streamlines and contours also. Okay, uh, Paravi has a lot of flexibility in creating, uh, you know, these things. Uh, okay, just give me a second. And also, uh, for the people who are using, sim you know, uh, doing simulations, I would highly recommend them. Uh, once you're running the simulation, don't. Uh, so, can we design this? Uh, Sir, can we design this model in a CAD software and import the design? Yes. So if you are using SOLIDWORKS, then, uh, you know, essentially import this design as a STL file. Okay. And in case you want to learn about SnappyX Mesh, uh, it's essentially now one of our courses where we teach SnappyX Mesh in detail. 
okay so we have a course called advanced cfd using open form so where you learn all this uh, you know meshing strategies and solving strategies for solvers okay probably you can also check for those courses also in case you are really interested with you know uh, a kind of a uh, let's say from solver development perspective okay so i believe there's a lot of you know improvement that could be done in the future okay and the way the people are using open form to large extent okay okay so that is one thing and uh, okay let me do one more thing so that you know uh, before we end this session i would also like to show you the results also probably you know you guys will be happy to see the results in paraview probably so i already have run the simulation okay so i have the result with me okay so it takes little bit of time to run the simulations okay uh, so i would highly recommend you running simulations only if you are free for like 15 20 minutes okay now uh, okay let us do one thing let us just try to create a slice here probably so i'll do one thing i'll show you how to make streamlines okay because that is what is more interesting to watch also okay slightly difficult to create but we'll just have a look at how do we create streamlines okay or well, if you try to go in then you may be seeing that just give me a second so you can see this pokemon inside so what else can we analyze other than pressure velocity sir so for external aerodynamics pressure and velocity is something that you want to majorly measure okay and if it is heat transfer involved then definitely how heat is getting you know convected or advected along with diffusion uh, in solid probably you know uh, conjugate heat transfer problem also like battery thermal management uh in short like depends upon what simulation you want to do like what physics you are trying to study uh cf mesh is essentially a uh, meshing utility okay it's kind of you know giving you a little booster on you know meshing little easily okay so the idea of any external aerodynamics mostly would be understanding you know lift and drag essentially understanding how pressure distribution and velocity distribution is over the body okay so let me do one thing quickly let me just uh one second guys yeah uh let me create a streamline before that let me just make if you want to observe anything which is inside the domain uh, you know reduce the opacity to a large extent okay now what you can do is you can essentially create a streamline okay now let us do one thing uh first thing that we we'll do is we'll create a streamline tracer okay now here what we would do is we will try to make a point cloud okay now you can see that this this might be very similar to what you would have done in your ansys fluent okay or probably in star system also uh, you can specify the location of this probably like 0.25 or something and then uh, 0.2 uh, and then or probably this is 0 and this also 0 okay probably should be 0 okay all this should be 0.1 and then 0.1 okay just have a look so this essentially looks like minus 0.1 okay okay makes sense i hope this is clear everyone yes i believe this is clear everyone now what you could do is you can reduce the number of points essentially okay like you are given 100 points here probably i'll give some 25 points that would be sufficient okay and you can see the streamlines coming up from those regions okay now uh, for the people this is for pressure you can see the velocity also and what you could do alternatively is to make it look little better you can essentially change the what is a uh, color bar uh, you know kind of uh, you know preset now this jet essentially works neatly so you can see this thing right now next thing that you would do is use uh, a filter called tube okay this is additional thing uh, click on apply and i can see stream tubes what you could do is essentially reduce the size of this thing little bit and now here you go okay 
I hope you are able to see this thing now. Clear, everyone? Yes. So the idea is all the same way. So in case if I want to make sure that this Pokemon becomes even more legendary, uh, I need to create you know some surface modification where drag tends to be minimized. Okay. So that would be my you know next target probably. Okay. Clear, everyone? Yes, I hope everyone is able to understand what I'm trying to do here. Done. Okay. So with this, I conclude my session of, you know, how to use CF mesh along with open form for creating the simulations. It's all about understanding that one file called mesdict and then, you know, understanding how do you create the enclosure. Okay. With the commands. Okay. Commands also pretty straightforward. You will find them with the tutorials. Okay.